Hi, welcome to this video. Uh, what I'm going to do here, this is a quick one to share with something I've learned uh, in terms of uh, testing for ammonia when you're using dechlorinator, which is pretty significant in terms of the, uh, the results you'll get. Now, when I was doing some of these tests using my household ammonia here, uh, I was finding that, um, that when I used it on dechlorinated water, it seemed to be that uh, the dechlorination um, was removing all the ammonia because it wasn't showing up in the test. Um, and, um, and this was baffling me, I couldn't work out how on earth the chlorinator could uh, remove ammonia because my understanding was if you have chloramine in your water, in fact dechlorinating it uh, introduces ammonia, not, not removes it. So I thought I'd run this experiment to show you the issue and then talk through my understanding of, of what's going on. So we've got a drop here, we've got two, two um, millilitre um, vials of water and we've got a drop here of ammonia I'm going to put into each one. That's going to be a very, very high concentration of ammonia in both those samples. I'm now going to add the chlorinator, which is predominantly sodium theosulfate, into this test here. And now I'm going to see how these two respond to your standard ammonia test kit. Now I've used API here. The API tests are pretty good because they come in large bottles, which give you lots and lots of tests. Uh, I also use NT Labs, but the ammonia one has three steps, so it's slightly longer to do, and they come in smaller bottles. So if you're doing loads of tests, uh, having these bigger ones is, is better value. Also, a little tip, I tend to use two milliliter samples rather than five, which means you can reduce the number of drops to 40% of, of what they, um, uh, they say on the bottle, and that means you get uh, more than twice as much out of, the, uh, out of the test kit, which is really handy if you're doing lots of tests on a regular basis. So I'm going to run these tests now and show you the results. Okay, so I'm going to do three drops of test bottle one, which is my reduced number. Three drops in there. Quick shake. And then three drops of the second solution. Again, give it a quick shake now because there's, there's going to be an obscene amount of ammonia in these so they'll start reacting quite quickly but it normally takes quite a long time for your ammonia test results to come through uh, typically I tend to leave them about half an hour so I get a really good stable reading so let's come back to that in half an hour and see what they look like okay so it's now an hour later and the test kits had time to react and uh, there's a big difference between the two results um, the, uh, the one here has got a very high level of ammonia and the one on the, the right has apparently got a very low level of ammonia but we know there's a lot in there. Um, so what's going on? Is it that the chlorinator is removing the ammonia or is something else happening? Well I've done a fair amount of research looking into the ingredients in these two bottles. This one is um, primarily polyethylene glycol um, and this one is pro predominantly sodium hydroxide with a bit of sodium hypochlorite in there as well which is uh, common or garden bleach. And um, the, uh, the principal ingredient in dechlorinator is sodium theosulfate, which likes to react with sodium hypochlorite and sodium hydroxide. So what's going on here is the test kit is reacting with the residual dechlorinator in the water, and that's meaning it's not reacting as it should do as part of the test, and it's not changing colour um, as the test should. So it means that your ammonia test kits are really unreliable if you've got any residual dechlorinator in your water. Uh, so it means that you need to make sure you do any tests before you do a water change, just in case there's any uh, additional um, uh, dechlorinator left over that then is affecting your test results. I hope that's useful. Catch you on the next video.